Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another Wild Rift video and today's video I'm playing support again and this is an absolute banger because I tell you this guy I tell you this many times guys that I like I believe Alistar is different from any other support in the game because Alistar has some things that it that is crazy like you know you can 1v1 a lot of champions throughout the game you can roam around your ganks are crazy the combos that Alistar has are crazy more on this during the gameplay by the way i made another video for wild drift esports you know um these are very good videos because these are edited videos it's me analyzing a game and i'm actually analyzing japanese esports i'm not gonna spoil anything about it i'm just gonna tell you that you really want to check it out i'll put a link to it in the description and you can check it out i have some other episodes as well yet again just look up wild drift esports hell's devil if you look up those four words you'll see all of the videos that i made for them they are good so Okay, let's get to it. How to build Alistar. So there's obviously a few, multiple ways to build Alistar, but I'm just going to tell you guys my favorite way, which is pretty much always starting off with boots. Like having boots on Alistar just feels way too good to not do. Like you can roam around a lot and it's just very nice. So you're going to be starting off with the boots, uh, plated steel caps. I would say like you know 95 percent of the games i never go for mercury threats uh you don't need it you already have your ultimate L look if you really don't need the plated steel caps you can get an ionian boots of lucidity for the cooldown reduction but again like ionian steel caps is way too good to not go on alistar alistar by the way is very good into heavy ad compositions just so you know so for uh, oh yeah for your enchantment um protobot is good for the good alistar player if you're already good at alistar protobot is going to make you even better if you want to play it safe you can get the locket or you can get the redemption but as i said Pro protobot is so amazing on alistar because it unlocks even even more combos than Ar alistar already has so this is really really nice first item you go for the dead man's plate um you can get a bramble fast as your first item if you need the anti-healing like if you're up against a Sona or a Soraka or something, you can actually you should actually get a Bramble Fast and then you go for the Dead Man's Plate. So Dead Man's Plate is pretty much a go-to item on Alistar. It gives so much damage, the movement speed, even after the nerf, still a go-to item. I mean, if you really have if you have a really good ADC and the enemy has a lot of mixed damage, you can actually start with a Zeke's Converges. This one is gonna be more of a supporting um a supporting item than like a damaging item for yourself because you're going to be supporting your ally you're going to be buffing the damage of your ally and keep in mind like that man's plate is just perfect on alistar it gives you so much movement speed it's just amazing that's why i always go for this one as my first item really abyssal mask is like a potential third item or a second item so you can get a abyssal mask if the enemy has a lot of magic damage and if your team has a lot of magic damage and it's all about this passive right here nearby enemy champions take 15 percent bonus magic damage so you know if your team has a lot of magic damage and the enemy you can get the abyssal mask otherwise never go for it also it really buffs your damage because alistar deals a lot of magic damage um protector's vow is good if the enemy wants to dive your backline you know if the enemy has like a rengar or something protector's vow is going to protect your teammates it's gonna be amazing like if you are if you're if the enemy has an evelyn that one shots your adc you stay next to your adc and you get the protector as well you can get the protector size your second or third item as well if you want to um so other items that are really good let me see Randomance Omen, this one is always good. Like if the enemy has crit, you always go for the Randomance Omen. And I also want to talk about the Warmark. Um, if you're constantly like ganking or having skirmishing fights, like, you know, one versus two, two versus twos, two versus threes, you want to get a Warmark. Because like these are often very small fights. So what's going to happen? You're going to fight. The enemy is going to get low. Your team is going to get low. But you're going to heal up with the Warmark. And then after you can go again. You know, you can go in again. So Warmark is really good in that case. Like, I really love Warmark and Alistar too. So let's talk about the runes. Aftershock always. Like, always an Aftershock. There's not even, no even, no discussion. Second rune, you go for weakness. You apply weakness so easily on the enemies that you just always go for the weakness. It's really, really good. Also, if you didn't know already, Dead Man's Plate. When you when you when you get the hundred bonus stacks, you not only deal damage, you also slow the enemy by fifty percent, which means the enemy is gonna take bonus damage from the weakness. So like you have so many tools to 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 turn on the weakness that you just have to go for weakness. Third one is situational. Bone plating is often amazing because you know like um, the only way where Alistar is squishy is in the lane matchup like if when you're in the lane matchup you have an annoying matchup and the enemy is constantly poking you out so you can either go for a bone plating second wind 
Or like, you know, if you really think you have an easy lane, you can get a conditioning to get even tankier in the late game. That's how you have to approach uh, runes with Alistar. If you're up against like a Varus or something, you can get a second wind to heal you up. If you're up against uh, Jinx, if you're up against like uh, Ezreal, if you're up against like a Caitlyn, Bone Plating is going to be amazing to block out that burst damage from them that they have. But yeah, generally conditioning, if you think you're safe in the early game, you can get a conditioning. And for your fourth rune, there's a few that you can go for. Pack Hunter, I like Pack Hunter a lot because I, I, you know, I gank a lot and I get a lot of kills. What's going to happen with Pack Hunter, it gives me 50 gold and my ally 50 gold. And on top of it, while near ally champions gain 2% movement speed, which is just a nice bonus as well. But it's really all about the gold. You're going to be getting so much gold out of this one. But yeah, you can also get a Pathfinder if you just want to roam around and gank. Pathfinder is amazing because it makes you faster. So like, do you, do you want to be faster around? You get a Pathfinder. Do you want more gold? Then you get the Pack Hunter. Pack Hunter is just going to give you the gold. You can also get the uh, um, Hunter Genius if you just want the cooldown reduction. I don't really recommend it, but again, you can. It's all good. Like, all of it is good. For your spells, you go for Flash and Ignite. I pretty much always go for Ignite and Alistar because it's very nice. Like, it's very, very nice. Uh, let me just move my camera a little bit. It's very, very nice because of the damage. And as I said, it really fits Alistar's playstyle. So enough about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. <clears throat> So as you can see, we have the top two, Nunu, top one, Brand. This is, I believe, the top one, Riven. This is the top two, Amumu, who we're up against. So, I actually picked Alistar into this Amumu. Uh, I had the Amumu and the, uh, I had Amumu and Katarina in my last game. And we absolutely destroyed the enemy. And now we're up against them. So, and the Katarina was really good as well. So, th th this is going to be a good game, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh! No, completely forgot about the Blitzcrank, as you see. <laughs> they had a Blitzcrank. So, Alistar here is like a really amazing pick. Because, now you know what? Test your knowledge. This is going to be a test your knowledge. I'm bringing back the test your knowledge, baby. Test your knowledge. If you look at this enemy composition, Alistar is incredibly good because of numerous reasons. Like, multiple, multiple, multiple reasons. This is the perfect Alistar game. Now, try to give me a few of these reasons. Put them in the comments. Test your knowledge. Try to give me a few of these reasons and put it in the comments. I'm also giving away 8 legendary skins to the comments, you know. To Oh my god, this Blitzcrank. If you want to enter the giveaway, put it in the comments. Okay. So pause the video right now, because I'm going to reveal it. Uh, I'm going to try to reveal it, because there is just way too many to say. Okay, I'm going to reveal it. So if you're writing, pause the video, make sure. First of all, enemy has a Riven. Heart engaged champion, but not a burst champion. It's a heart engaged champion. What can I do? Headbutt her away. Secondly, Katarina. What can I do? Cancel her ultimate. Very, very, very easily. My first ability cancels her ultimate. My second ability cancels her ultimate. And my third ability can cancel her ultimate. Fourth of all, Blitzcrank. I want a frontline for my team. If Blitzcrank hooks, I frontline. He hooks me into them. And then I knock all of them up. That is another way that we counter them. And now fourth of all, Amumu. Amumu wants to one-shot burst. So Amumu goes in. He ults my team. And then they all engage. What do I do? I push away the biggest damage champion. Which is going to be the Katarina or the Riven, right? Like, if Amumu ults us, or if, if, like, I can even not allow him to ult us. When he goes on us, I can just push him away. So, these are all the ways that you can counter this type of composition. And these are this is how you have to think about drafting Alistar. Like, do you really utilize the abilities of Alistar? Yes, then yes. Like, this is how you have to think about it. It's not just, you know, okay, you can knock up the enemy, that's it. No, you can cancel out engages, you know, or... Come on, he's probably dead. Yeah, like I run away for one second from my lane and my Lucian dies. I got a kill in the mid lane. It's of course worth for me to do that. But yeah, unfortunately my ADC couldn't uh, play it safe. Let's see. So, you know, I, I'm i thinking about fighting him. Let's take a look. Like, I'm definitely thinking about fighting him here, as you can see. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. I have a, I have a ignite. Boom, boom. I don't have to all. So I was ready with my flash. Oh, he filled his flash. That's tragic. But even if he didn't fail it. Oh, they, what? Okay. Okay. Okay, I guess. 
I guess we just don't get the kill. Oh, I'm going for a Zeke's Convergence? I actually know why. I th We have a Yasuo and a Lucian, who both benefit a lot from the Zeke's Convergence. But it's, yeah, but it's like, obviously, you know, I, I tell you guys this very often. I test out builds. I pretty much always go for the Deadman's Plate. And you guys are coincidentally going to see the one where I went for the Zeke's Convergence. So it's going to be interesting to see how it actually plays out. Is it, oh, I know also why. Because this enemy wants to fully engage on us. And they have a lot of melee champions. So they have four melee champions. Zeke's Convergence is very good into melee champions because they want to get super close to my team. Zeke's Convergence is going to slow all of them. And the ally that it buffs is going to do bonus damage to all of them. That is why I went for the Zeke's Convergence this game. That is exactly why I went for it. I remember now. Boom, boom. Yeah. This is why Alistar doesn't counter as Az Ezreal, by the way. Actually, Ezreal counters Alistar really hard. It's because he can just uh, dash out of the... Uh, he can dash out of my engage. Boom and stunt, and he should be dead. Like Blitzcrank cannot do anything against uh, against an Alistar. Alistar just hard counters Blitzcrank, so just the perfect draft, really. Also, if Amun tries to steal the dragon, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna headbutt him away. That's another thing that Alistar can do. When you're taking dragons or Rift Heralds or Barons, when the enemy jungler tries to steal it, you can just you can just headbutt that enemy away. Let's take a look at this. This is a really good engage. Boom. Oh my god. They do, they're doing they doing a lot of damage. That was definitely not the cleanest engage of me, but it worked. So, another thing. As you can see, I actually didn't go for a protobelt this game. Now, why would you think? You right? Like, don't you remember me saying during the build part, like, if you're a good Alistar, you have to get protobelt. That's correct. Uh, like, I'm not gonna say that I was not wrong. But let's look at this game, guys. Let's just look at this game. Enemy has an all-in composition. They have a Katarina and they have an Amumu. So what do I want to do? I want to make my team survive. What does the Locket do? Gives them that big Locket shield, guys. And that is absolutely necessary this game. If I don't go for a Locket this game, I'm absolutely hard trolling. Like, I'm genuinely tr just trolling the game. Redemption is useless. Why? Because Katarina's ultimate applies anti-healing. So Redemption doesn't do anything. Locket is amazing because it just gives a barrier to my entire team. So whenever Amumu ults, whenever he ults, I ult. Now, the reason why I ult is because if you're stunned, you cannot use the locket. There is the locket. It saved my ass, as you can see. But yeah, whenever you're stunned, you cannot use the locket. So what I'm going to do when Amumu engages and ults, I instantly ult and then I use the locket. Locket to save my team and then my second ability to push away the Katarina. That is basically like the basic game plan that we have right here, right? Like that is the basic game plan that I'm having. I cannot engage here because I don't have an ultimate. I actually decided to not use my ultimate there. I use my flash instead because I want to have my ultimate for the next team fight. Like, I really believe the ultimate is even more important than uh, having a flash on Alistar. Obviously, it depends. With my build, it is because I have a Zeke's Convergence. Because Zeke's Convergence only works when you use your ultimate, right? Like, that's the whole idea of the item. So, that's why. Um, let's see. So... What did I want to say? Like, in this game, I actually only ganked mid lane once. As you can see, I didn't really do that many ganks, but you can definitely do more with Alistar. Like, ganking-wise, you can definitely gank more. Here you can see I am, like, just as I start to talk about ganking, I'm thinking about diving the Katarina, as you can see. Two of them are roaming, of course, then I'm not going to go in. Um, but th uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, Grant, oh, he just used his third ability. Like, Ezreal just made a big mistake there by engaging with his third ability. I could have engaged on him and followed up with the Yasuo ultimate and he could have died. But yeah, sweeper here. There we go. I always use a sweeper as an Alistar, by the way, because it's amazing to have two sweepers in your team. As you can see, we're sweeping away two very important wards right here. Enemies have no idea what's happening. Okay, look, boom, boom. He ults, I ult, and lock it. This is all I could have done. As you can see, they still killed me. But is it worth it? Yes, it is. It is absolutely worth it. This is like the basic combo that I'm going to be doing throughout the entire game. Um, as you can see, we still lost the team fight, um, but this is what I have to do. This is exactly what I have to do because this is their all in, and I'm also going for a protector's vow this game. As I said, like this game, I turned around my entire build. I turned around. What is he saying? If you fight again without me, I'll go AFK. I mean, no one really cares about you. I'm going to be real honest about you. 
Like, these are the people that I really hate the most. You know, no, no, if you don't fight, I do this. They're pretending like they're hard carrying the game, right? But whatever, let's forget about that. And what was I saying? Yeah, I'm going for a Protector's Vow this game. First of all, the Zeke's Convergence. I explained to you guys why. Protector's Vow, because they have the Katarina and the Amumu Engage. Yet again, like, Protector's Vow is yet another barrier. I just want to give my team as many barriers as we can. No idea why my team didn't take the mid lane turret here, by the way. This was an absolutely free mid lane turret, but it is what it is, I guess. Now let's take a look at how I approach this fight. Um, so I'm engaging. Yeah, I was just wasting time for my Nunu to get the dragon. They already used the locket right there because they were afraid of me. This is amazing, because now we have a locket and they don't have a locket. This is an oh, boom, boom. I ult, locket. Yet again, you see how it's just so simple? Ult, locket. Old look it. It's as simple as that what I'm doing in this game. This is not gonna happen every game, of course. As I said, like it's complete the situation how you need to play the Alistar. In this game, this like that's the reason why this was the perfect Alistar game. Because I can just always just use my ultimate and lock it. And then you know I can cancel out their abilities to deny a lot of their damage. It's just it's perfect, perfect Alistar. By the way, guys, make sure you give the video a like if you're enjoying it. Oh, no, I'm gonna tell you guys this later, but basically I am thinking about streaming Wild Rift. I am thinking about it. No promises. I'm thinking about it. You know, like very occasional streams on Twitch. Uh, if you want to follow me, I'll probably forget to put the link in the description. But if I did, then you can check out the description. If I didn't, it's twitch.tv slash hellsdevil. And then with a lower, um, with that lower, lower case thingy. Uh, I'll promote it. I'll promote it properly later on. Don't you worry. But that is my Twitch. Like, if you wanna, if you wanna find me, you can just look up Hell's Devil, and I'm pretty sure you'll find me. Hmm. My brand didn't push out this wave, but we should definitely push out this wave. Oh, there it is. It's the Lucian, actually. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess I'm having a brain fart right now. Nothing to say. So we can just sit in peace, you know, enjoy the coffee. And enjoy the, enjoy the show as well. Oh, he's dead. I'm wait oh, I should have potentially waited for his third ability. So it's okay. But an idea that you can have, so an idea is potentially waiting for his third ability. So waiting for him to dash away and then engaging. I mean, like, oh. Boom. And he's just dead. Yeah, there we go. Like, you cannot do anything against me. I have a Rift Herald as well. Uh, three of them are dead. I could use a Rift Herald here, but it seems like Brand is going back. Uh, like... Rift Herald, like, I, we, we can get a very important turret with it, so I'm just like, nah, I'm not gonna put it down yet. We could even get an inhibitor turret with it. So I got my Protector's Vow now. And I'm just, like, in this game, I'm completely skipping out the Dead Man's Plate. This is something that I never do. Like, never. And I don't recommend it. Again, this is just, this is just very situational for this particular game, the build. Oh, that was an amazing engage. Here, I'm not waiting for his third ability. Reason is, because we can just kill him in one go, right? Like, Nunu's knock-up, Yasuo's knock-up, my knock-up, he cannot even escape. He doesn't even have time to use it. So that is why... This time, it did completely make sense to do it like that. I'm not gonna use a Rift Herald here on that turret because we don't need it. I'm just gonna engage. First ability, second ability in the middle of my team, and he is dead. Like, there's no reason with Alistar to always do the standard engage, which is second ability, first ability. There is no, there's no reason. I am taking the turret, and I am the one that has to tank the turret. As you can see, I'm not running out of it. I'm tanking the entire turret, I'm using my Zeke's Convergence as well, and now, boom, I'm running out before the killing blow. You see? I tanked the turret throughout the entire duration, because Alistar's ultimate practically makes you unkillable for 7 seconds. And it reduces turret damage too. So it just literally reduces any damage that you take, as except for true damage. So it's amazing for Alistar on turret diving. So you have to be the one that turret dives. That's the hard thing about Alistar, right? Like, you are the one that has to take the initiative to dive. You are the one that makes those decisions. So as an Alistar, it's not a laid-back playstyle. It's not like playing Sona, right? Like Because when you play Sona, you're kind of just chilling in the back line and uh, you let your team engage. No. As an Alistar, you are the engager. You are the initiator. A bit of an awkward feel right there, by the way. But you are the initiator and you have to go in. You have to make the plays. Like you can see, Amumu just uses... 
Katarina tries to ult. Oh, she actually dodged my first ability, but I would have just cancelled it out anyways. But at this point, you can just clearly see, like, they have no more chance. They have no chance. I have a first ability and a potential flash. He just uses engage, so I do it. Come on, team. Where's my team? Where's my team? Hello. We can win this. Hey. Look at this. What are they doing? Oh. Protectors will save my ass. Where was my team? I know they were low, but what? Why do people not see the potential of Alistar? This is what Alistar can do. You can just waste so much time and still win a fight like that. My team just left me alone for nothing. No, that's so sad. Damn, the protectors vow really saving me right there, huh? Hmm. Man, I, I kind of feel bad for this enemy because they have the they they literally have the worst draft that they could have ever imagined. The only good thing that they have is the Riven, because Riven actually absolutely hard counters Nunu, but like the rest is just nothing against our composition. It doesn't work. It just doesn't. Riven can never kill me, by the way, so that's why I'm gauging on her. But yeah, this is, Riven can do that, right? Like she can just dash away, but it's fine. I'm just getting keeping her away. I'm not gonna help here. Um, I am actually just, well, I am gonna help, but I should actively try to push away the Amumu. Yes, ooh, that was not the smartest choice of me. Definitely not the smartest way to approach this fight for me. Because the better thing to do for me was to just keep away the Amumu. Because he could have, like, I I'm not saying that he would have in this game, but he could have stolen the Baron, right? Like, he could have stolen the Baron if he engaged with a flash ultimate combo or something like that. He could have definitely stolen it. Here you can see I body blocked the Yasuo. Unfortunately, he still died. But it's okay. Um, it's definitely okay. Top 1 Brand, top 1 Yasuo, and top 1 Nunu is enough. I love how they're just completely ignoring um, the big cow. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I played this game like three weeks ago, by the way. It's kind of funny. Wait, it's the top 1 Black Cle Black... Uh, what is he called? Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank. That's funny. Top 1 Blitzcrank. Oh, I think, yeah, I think I, I know that guy's name from the top one Blitzcrank leaderboard. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I guess we're also against the top one Blitzcrank. But it's like we're not against them because of the composition that we have. It perfectly counters them. Boom. Could just go full aggressive here again. We can just easily push this turret. They cannot do anything. They cannot do anything. Best support ever seen. There it is. These guys actually added me and wanted to play a lot of games with me. I did. But then I stopped playing with them. Well, yeah, I only played like five games with them or something. But then I stopped because one of them was very toxic. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, like, I, I just constantly want to give you guys new support videos. And really show you that support is not about just supporting your ADC in lane. Because in this game, like... 80% uh, of the game, I was not in my lane, as you can see. Like, I was just not in my lane. I was not in the lane matchup. I was constantly roaming around, and it was working like a gem. As you can see, I have 4 kills and 21 assists. So, I've, I've been, uh, like, I've participated in, like, 85% of the kills, which is huge, of course. You won't have that if you just stay in your lane, by the way. That is why I'm saying, as a support, you can constantly roam around. And I have playlists on this YouTube channel. Wait, sorry, guys. I have playlists on this YouTube channel. Um, if you just want to learn one role, you know, like the dragon lane, support, mid lane, whatever, you can just look at my playlists, which is in one of the tabs on my YouTube channel. You know, you, you have the community tab, the home tab, the videos tab. There is also a playlist tab. There you can find five playlists with all the roles. So if you just want to see all of my support videos or all of my mid lane videos, you can find one of those playlists and you can scroll through those videos to check it out, right? Um, if you don't, then you don't. It's fine. So that is it. Um, that is it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. Let's take a look at how much damage I did in this game. Because I'm sure it's going to be a lot. Yeah, you can see here I was only at like 300 LP. Uh, better than 98% of the Alistars, by the way. Wait, how much damage? That's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I will see you all in the next Wildrift video. Bye-bye.